All right, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, creatives from around the globe to day two of NAB NYC. My name is Matthias Omotola, a.k.a. Major VFX on all the socials, and I'm here at the Maxon booth where we're showcasing Maxon One and how our amazing artists are using it to create some of the most dynamic effects that you see on just about any screen anywhere in the world. First off, kicking it off, longtime friend, amazing artist here, Anthony Barry Jr. Let's give him a round of applause, everyone. Yay. <laughs> Thank you, New York City. Um, happy to be here. First thing in the morning, uh, we're going to talk about eye candy made easy with the Red Giant tools. And if you want to stay in contact, I got a QR code. And we'll get back to this slide here in just a bit. Let me just jump over to the website and show you some of the tools we're going to talk about here. Okay, Universe Tools. Right? And then we'll go back and go to Products. And inside of Red Giant, there's the, all of these different suites. Trap Code, Magic Bullet, Universe, and VFX. We're primarily going to talk about Universe and VFX today. And then we'll talk about using them inside of Adobe After Effects primarily and using them inside of Adobe Premiere just in case you do more Premiere than you do After Effects. And yes, you can also use some of these effects inside of DaVinci Resolve. So let's just go over here. Here's the VFX suite. I'll just kind of give you a quick tour. And let me see. You know what? I'll just showcase the tools. And let's go to Universe. Universe just has tons and tons of effects and generators and text effects, transitions, all these things. And if you look at my internet right here, everything looks a little bit blurry. That's just my bandwidth. So um, let's just jump right in. And I can show you here in our host application, Adobe After Effects. Okay. So what is eye candy made easy? So a couple of the effects that I will highlight today, uh, the optical glow, as you can see, it's already applied to that text right there. It's definitely one of my absolute favorite effects. Uh, it's very subtle, but at the same time, it is pretty powerful, and I will show you why. Uh, the reflection, the shadow effect, and the spot clone tracker. And then inside of the universe effects, the symbol mapper, the heat wave, the progresso effect, type on, electrify, and luster. Now, if you look right up here, I got these little birds, right? my red, green, and blue birds. Those are made with the symbol mapper. And I'll show you, because um, I'm not, I may be called an artist, but I definitely cannot draw. I can't, I can't do much painting, but I can uh, click a couple of buttons in here and make a bird that animates over time, uh, such as this one right here. So that's just a shape and a path, and all I'm doing is modifying that, and this is the mosaic effect, standard effect that ships with After Effects, and this is the symbol mapper that kind of looks... It just looks cool whatever you put it on. And I'll show you different versions of this right here. So inside of here, um, it basically, let's break this down. Let's go back to my analog flame. Again, like I said, I really love just using the pen tool to mock up the idea of uh, a graphic. So I just made this simple graphic. It's a bunch of triangles. I had three triangles right here to simulate a campfire flame, right? So we have our core, middle, and this is the outer part. Thank you. And... Uh, I do, just did a little bit of a wiggle adjustment to them, so they kind of just move subtly like they're in the wind, right? And they ultimately turn into something like this. Let me, let me just render it out right here for you. So now they kind of look like a light bright. Anybody remember light bright? Well, they kind of have this... Um, Basically, you take a bunch of symbols, you can control how many symbols, you can make them alphanumeric, you can make them, you know, hashtags, you can control the, the amount of uh, different symbols that pop up. So let me just show you this. And then I'll add some, some uh, I'll show you, how, uh, there's a couple of different effects applied to this as well. So this is the symbol mapper along with, and I'll hit E to show you the effects that I have applied to this. So symbol mapper, unmult. This is a popular little effect that's been around for a really long time. It's more of a uh, utility, because basically it will drop all the light and dark values and give you, um, give you transparency like an instant alpha channel. And uh, I use that because this kind of lives on a grid, and I'll show you that here in a bit. 
So you want to drop off that grid so it masks it and it looks all nice and clean like this. And then the optical glow, it really kind of sells that effect. It seems subtle, but when you push, uh, when you push all these pixels and you want them to pop on the screen, a little bit of glow just kind of sells the idea that much more. So let's go ahead and I'll just show you here in the symbol mapper what the symbol mapper can do. So when you apply symbol mapper, by default, it's going to give you this grid, and I'm just going to mess this up on purpose real quick. So you can see, we'll go right here to grid settings. All right, so all of these symbols will live on a grid, and on the grid we have X and Y, and then we have the symbol size. All right, so if I drag that up, now you can see how crazy that looks. All right, boom, undo that, and then let's push this. All right, so now it's really tight and things are overlapping that's not what we want all right so you got to dial it in so you have the right pixel density so as i put all of these numbers in the positive you're going to see now you can see a little bit of daylight behind your graphic and that's not exactly selling the effect so if you want to show something and you want to showcase that it's a set of numbers making up a shape or animating you really don't want to show daylight behind it so the idea is right to go back to the negative numbers here and now you can see there's minimal daylight back there and then it looks more like a fire or it looks more like an LED, uh, LED flame. So besides that, go down here and you're going to see uh, here's an option for symbol limit and you could choose. So I have 64 characters, right? And I'm choosing numbers, numbers only. Or you can kind of uh, change it all up and do all characters. Now you're going to have uh, the thing about that, it kind of gets a little wonky when you do that. So the trick is make things look a little bit uniform and then they sell the effect a little bit better. So you can do all numbers or numbers and symbols or, you know, kind of go, go to town with this and just kind of pick what is, uh, you know, what's your forte, what do you want to do? So the idea is make things a little bit uniform. You can adjust how random it is. So if you're tired of seeing just one and zero, uh, you, can add it, you can add it to where like you'll get nines and eights and sixes, or you can get hashtags or whatever you want. So the symbol uh, setting right here is pretty important as far as selling the effect. You want to make sure that uh, you limit these symbols and then you want to keep them kind of uniform. And I believe uh, personally that that sells the effect instead of having a bunch of random characters just spilling out. So it gets more fun. Let me just show you this. Uh, I have some hidden layers here. And let me open these up. And these are just basically going to be little triangles that are just kind of sparking, right? Let's say you're at a campfire and it just kind of, right, starts to pop. So let's go back here and you'll see all those little, uh, little triangles turn into these like awesome little characters that just kind of fall off there. And then you can kind of, again, go in here and instead of making them symbols, just take a look at numbers, right? Or even limit that. So by dragging that slider, now I'm going to see less of these numbers, and I have 19 symbols, not 66, or 100 and however many, right? So you can drag that up to 64, that's the max, or you can bring it to like one or two, and you're going to get the same ones. So, but I had it at, by default at 64, I want to say. So, um, you know, the, the idea of this is it kind of gives you that light, bright look. It gives you the idea of uh, like a little LED LED like pegs falling off and that's our little symbol fire and again I applied it over here on the birds all right and that's kind of like giving me a shape that looks you know you can take very basic artwork and then quickly uh, you know promote it to something that looks like you put that much more time and effort into and and to me that kind of saves a bunch of time when you've got a client uh, you know screaming down your neck trying to get this get this thing turned around so you can drop a few of these things on and make something look um, you know a lot better than than just a bunch of quick shapes so not everybody loves just the simple shapes so um, that right there is our symbol mapper and let's go to I'll show you this one right here it's like an opening screen for a video game and this is using symbol mapper in the background um, you can see the birds here that's still those are the pixelated birds with the mosaic effect which is 
a standard effect. And then this text right here, there's two, two types of text that I have in here, and they're all made easy. These are uh, part of the universe suite of effects. Let me just render this out when I'm talking. Um, so the idea is, right, you got this like MS-DOS looking text, right, and it just kind of like, basically you get that little blinking square at the same time. <coughs> It'll type on, and the effect itself is called the type on effect. So if I go here, and we just drag across, it kind of does a reveal. Um, if you were to do this the native way, just inside of After Effects, it would involve maybe mo one more comp or making things into a nest, right? Comp in a comp in a comp, or even expressions or a few things to get this to work in this way. And a lot of these effects actually are like two or three steps inside of one effect, which save a bunch of time. Um, so this effect up here, the luster effect, this is a pretty awesome effect. And let me just take a moment and let me just talk about the red giant dashboard here. So as I'm showing you all these effects, I want you to think about this. So if you install Universe on your, uh, if you have Adobe Premiere or Adobe After Effects, as soon as you open it and you've installed the effect, now you get this awesome little dashboard that kind of lives inside of your interface. And it becomes kind of like a moving diner menu, right? There's like a million things that you could choose from. But in here, you can actually just hover over and then you're going to see Here's everything inside of a little animated GIF, and it tells you when you actually click on it, it'll tell you what the effect does, and it gives you presets. Let's say that you always use a particular preset or you want to create your own. You can promote your own, uh, and then I'll hit this little heart right here under Super Hot. Click that button. Let me go back, and you'll see Favorites pop up. And then you're going to see inside of Favorites, I'll click around. And it'll pop up. Let's see. I'll do it again. Maybe one heart wasn't good enough. There it is. So under favorites, that uh, preset will pop up here. And then I can instantly apply it. So there's no secret sauce. Now you know exactly where to go. Let's say this is something that you did and you have a repeat client. Now you can kind of share all these effects. And you already know which ones that you always use. Plus, you can always uh, add in your own presets as well, and they will populate inside of this. And you can also uh, you know, start typing things, and you will see uh, what, what pops up. So this menu right here, very useful to kind of find what you need uh, instead of going through all of these different effects. And again, it's very user-friendly in the sense to where I can just hover over it, and then I see what's going on. And if that isn't enough, just click on it, and now it tells you exactly what's going on. So... Um, that's probably one of the, the most uh, easy things when, you have, when you're on a deadline and you just know that you need to make things look a little bit better. You don't want to add too many effects. You just want to add the right effects. And the subtlety is kind of what sells the idea so people don't pay attention to how many effects you put in your timeline. They pay attention to like, oh, okay, that works together. Or well, these, these two edits are congruent and they don't even see the work. When they don't see the work, then that, that's how you know you did a good job. doesn't mean it wasn't hard. So let's go over here. And let me just talk through luster, right? So the luster effect. And let's go over here uh, under text or stylize. Oh, you know, this is a great time to go and search it. Let's go up here. Effects, luster. There it is. Click on it. And then it tells you right here, luster uh, applies a metal sheen to text layers uh, that get a glossy simulated 3D vibe, right? So you can make it kind of look like a polished piece of aluminum. You can kind of dirty it up. And then you can do a uh, reflection map right inside. So you can actually add in just a layer into your comp. And then you can use that as a reflection to kind of emulate the environment as though that light was bouncing right back off of uh, this text right here. So it makes it look as though, uh, you know, it sells the idea that that effect is in your scene. So this one right here, you can even, uh, let me just show you this here. I'll muck it up just to show you uh, the idea. So if I go here, color number one, color number two, you can kind of animate that highlight going across. So if you're introducing that idea, right? And then one thing I always love is on-screen controls. On-screen controls really make it that much easier. So if you're not like a ones and zeros kind of person and you really want to do things by just uh, going right on the screen, seeing what you like, and then clicking and dragging, you could see right here I have my on-screen control, and I just click around and just drag. And that uh, adjusts all the numbers here as well. 
So I'm a big fan of using on-screen controls. Sometimes it just makes things a little bit easier so you know exactly where they land and then you can just um, you know, keyframe it by using the on-screen controls. And of course, almost every single thing right here is keyframable. So the idea is um, you know, if, you're not, if you're not dialing into the effect controls, then you can go right over here and you can just click these little on-screen on -screen controls. So let's go over here to my next effect. So this is, this is one of my favorite effects to make life easy if you're doing an infographic, right? And let me just render this out while we're talking. So you can make easy graphics that basically, uh, whether you're showcasing um, you know, projected numbers for the quarter or you're, showing, you're doing the weather like I'm doing right now, or uh, you want to showcase uh, how the, the growth of the company, whatever it is, um, you can use Progresso to do all of this relatively easy. And what it'll do, it'll animate, not only will it animate your bar, your pie chart, your anything, it'll animate the color, it'll animate the little, uh, that little arrow that's popping up right here. So you can do all of these things inside of a single effect instead of using the pick whip, instead of going in or using an expression. Everything is in one single effect and it makes life that much easier. Again, especially when you're on a deadline. So I'll just let that go a little bit longer and I'll show you. All right, that's good enough. So let's just go in here. I'm gonna jump into just one of these compositions and I'll show you. So in here, you can see a couple things happening and let me just jump in. And of course, uh, common theme here, optical glow, all right? Without the optical glow, this is what you end up with. That's not the same and it doesn't pop the same on the screen as when you add a little optical glow. So if you really want to offset your pixels, you really want to sell the idea and you want things to pop and catch people's eye, optical glow is your best friend. You can use it on almost everything. It's just that little flavor packet that you put in your soup, right? So if you go here, let me just show you what's going on. I'm going to hit the E key, or actually I hit the U key. All right, U is going to reveal everything that's been keyframed. So all of my parameters that have been keyframed, they're all going to pop up here. And you're going to see, here is, uh, I have my font color, right? I have my uh, marker offset, so as it's growing, right? And then uh, where it's going. And then also you can see the color values for the marker and the color values for the font. They're all popping up here. And the progress is being keyframed. So all of these things are being keyframed inside of this single effect. And then one thing I really love is you have this little color picker here. And inside of this color picker, I can choose, you know, what is my starting color and then where is it going to end? So you can go in and you can actually click on this and make it any color you want. So if you have a color in your scene, when you have this little color picker, you can just go right into your comp and pick a color. So let's say you got lost and you forgot, oh, which type of red is it? And instead of it being slightly off, when you project it on a giant screen, everybody will see that it's slightly off. You can go right to the last one that you did. And of course, you can always duplicate your effect. But just want to tell you how many times I've used the color picker to kind of make things pixel perfect. So then that way uh, I don't get dinged for, oh, this is not exactly that color. So um, if we go here, you know, again, all of this in a single shot. And then once you do them, once you do one, let me show you the actual effect and uh, a couple of things that we can do here as far as presets and when it ships, right? So when it ships, you have all these presets. Let's go to choose a preset. And it didn't pop up because it's, I have mine living inside of my window, but you know, some people like for this to be like a floating window. I like, I like everything to be in one window. Reason being, um, if you have everything in one window, you can hit the tilde key very easy in, in Premiere or in After Effects. Uh, but if you try to do that when it's a floating window, you have to actually size it. So that's why I like things to live inside of my interface. So if I go here, right, let's go back and let's go to my presets for Progresso. And that should be under Motion Graphics, Progresso. Click on that and let's just take a look at some of these. These are all presets, great starting points that it's, it ships with, right? So by default, you will have all of these. And the one that I used, I want to say, was maybe tall. I think I used tall, or I might have used just a simple basic one that's a linear uh, sequence going left to right. And then all I did was just flip it on its axis, and I adjusted that it was going up and down versus going left and right. 
and then you can adjust the size of the bars you can adjust um, you know the spacing of the bars and then you can adjust and make a gradient and that's where you can pick your different colors so um, and then you got this like pac-man pie chart looking thing here all right so you can kind of you know either either do the uh, or you can do something that looks kind of like a light bulb or or even battery power right or even like a video game and you're losing energy you know whichever it is a lot of these right here will take you to a good spot to kind of get your get your stats out get your numbers out you know help make your uh, your PowerPoint uh, not a PowerPoint something animated and something interesting right so to convey the numbers you can actually jump in here and make a really interesting animated uh, chart whether it's linear or whether it's circular or pie chart whatever it is so let's just jump back here hit the tilde again and then I'm gonna show you now let's just jump into this so I know I showed you a bunch of these and I'm in After Effects but just in case you're using Adobe Premiere anybody using Premiere okay After Effects okay good I'm talking to the right crowd so if you're in Premiere all of these are available in Premiere as well uh, most of them so if you go in here and I just typed in uni as in universe you'll be able to see all the universe effects and you can see what lives in here and you also can go to your window extension and red giant uh, dashboard look familiar same thing right and here it is and look all these favorites are already applied that I did inside of After Effects. So whoever, uh, if, you're, if you're using the same workstation and now you have somebody doing all the motion design, then, uh, you know, then you have somebody doing the edits. Now all of the stuff is already favorited, so now you can kind of borrow things from one to another, uh, and it just kind of makes life easy. If you're trying to mock up what the motion designer does inside of your editing uh, program, that's not a problem inside using the universe effects. But let me just show you. So if you're using newer versions of Premiere, I guess within the last four years, um, where the essential graphics panel is, is, uh, is a thing, anything that you print, publish, right, inside of After Effects as a MoGert a file, right, as a uh, motion graphics template file, you can actually adjust inside of here. But if you can do it natively, I would just go with the native option anyway. But anything that you do inside of After Effects, you can control inside of here in the in the uh, essential graphics panel and then uh, let me just show you this one I have optical glow here and I just have uh, I'll turn on these are just you know three shapes that I made red green and blue and just to kind of showcase how how wonderful this glow can be all right you can also go in and control that effect right, right here and you can adjust and kind of make things look oh i'm in the wrong one that's the here it is all right so here and they really have this really interesting look to them and you can adjust and just make things look really cool and again for me i can just sit here and play with this effect and be like wild all day it's the simplest thing but it looks so lifelike and so uh, you know the fall off of the light itself looks pretty much like you shot it with a camera the math is correct and it just doesn't leave you with these like overblown uh, really you know dense pixels that if you were doing broadcast would definitely get kicked back so uh, this this effect itself is such a strong effect and such a simple effect that you can add a little bit of this to what you're doing and it just kind of goes a long way. So again, that's available in here. Uh, elements of the VFX suite, which I'm going to go into just now. Um, parts of this are not necessarily um, inside of here, but there was a really great addition. Let me just clear this out, and let's just do VFX. So inside of here, inside of the VFX suite, things that you can do inside of Adobe Premiere. You can use Primat Keyer very powerful simple tool and you can get to a really good place uh, within seconds and then all the fine-tuning takes a little bit longer than seconds but um, also real lens real lens flares that's another whole topic I've done full presentations just on the real lens flares uh, pretty awesome as well I'll leave it at that 
Uh, stay tuned. We'll probably have a, um, a series on how to use that here on, on Maxon's website pretty soon. Besides that, chromatic displacement, optical glow like I just showed you, and Primat Keyer. These are all great elements. Uh, you know, if you're not in After Effects and you're in Premiere, you can use these. But pretty much most of uh, Universe is all available inside of here. So let me just twirl that down. Let's go back right into Adobe After Effects. All right. And before I get into another project that I have, let's just talk about this other one that's really simple. All right. And if anybody's ever seen the marketing that Apple does, they usually have just one shape sitting on a white background with a nice beautiful reflection right uh, we have an effect for that that's called the reflection all right and let me just show you that so in here if you see my martini text under the martini text i have just a nice uh, simple reflection that you can control you can keyframe and you can kind of make all the adjustments you want to it all right and then you can have that fall off look as natural as possible and when you click on this one thing I really love, like I mentioned before, is the on-screen controls. So on-screen controls allow for me, this is kind of my, my X and Y, and this is my Z almost, right? Like how far is that going into the distance? How much reflection? What angle are we, are we looking at this, right? So you can kind of drag this out, and you can drag that T out here. And that kind of adjusts the way that this lives inside of your composition, right? So let's go back here reflection grab that and just drag that down and make it a nice soft uh, you know T right here and the more that you drag it back that shrinks it you can also adjust the softness and then also I've adjusted the opacity otherwise you can have it a little bit uh, stronger like that when I put it at 99 but I liked it at 40 again selling some of the some of the, selling this idea to a producer is really about making it subtle uh, if you add way too much spice to it People can tell. People can taste it. You know, so the idea is to make this subtle, and that, se that sells the effect without you having to, uh, you know, kind of push, push all your sliders to 100. You want to push them down to like 40 or 30, depending on what the effect is and what your background looks like. Here's another one. So I just, again, I'm not the, not the biggest in drawing, but I can make a martini glass. You can even just grab something, you know, some image reference, and then just, if you can use tracing paper, you can do it in After Effects with the pen tool. So I just made this martini glass, and I have this effect right here, and I'll show you. I purposely left a little flaw right here, and uh, this effect kind of gives you this nice, subtle shadow. All right, so let's just click on that, and we'll see, where is it? Martini with the shadow, right? And now we have in here all, all similar options to what you see with the uh, reflection tool, right? So when you see the reflection, you have that T. Same with this, you have the T, and then you can kind of reverse it, right? So now I have uh, my shadow is going in this direction versus my reflection was going in this direction. So now when I go in here, I'll click on that. And I can adjust that T, on-screen controls. And you can animate that too. So even if you were like using lights, you can kind of animate this and, and uh, you know, kind of make the idea of a light without even creating a light in here, right? So the other thing is, right, when you do this, right, there are blend modes, right, included inside of this effect. I keep clicking on the background. That's why it all disappears. So uh, there's a bunch of different things here, but this one right here is the important one. When you go to blend mode, there's an extra option here for behind because the shadow would not be living on top of that martini glass stem, right? It would be living behind it. So when I click on it, now it goes behind, and now you can see that sells the effect a little bit more, and that's just a single click. And the idea is that now it looks like a legit shadow. The shadow is not there. You don't have to put it in a composition and then put the uh, martini glass on top. You can do it all just in a single effect. So it limits how messy and how deep your, your compositions can be. You don't have to have 50 layers to get your point across. It makes things that much easier. There's another thing here too. Um, if you do, do want to put your shadow somewhere else, or let's say you want to make, you can do, there's an option for shadow only, right? So now you can have a ghost martini glass if you want. And you can just kind of add a little bit of noise to it, add a little grain to it. Um, you can change the way that shadow looks. 
you can adjust you know where it starts and where it finishes and again this is just a simple effect but the idea is that this is something that's a little bit more accurate without having to go into multiple layers multiple comps and just do everything right on the screen with on-screen controls so let me jump a little bit ahead here and we're going to go to this other composition that I have. All right, so, so far we've covered optical glow, right? A couple of times, All right? Reflection, shadow. We're going to talk about the spot clone tracker, which is actually faster than the native tracker inside of Adobe After Effects. And I'll show you a way to use it. Uh, the great part about it, it is one of those effects that's not just one effect, it's multiple effects in one, right? So it'll do a clone and it'll do a track but let's say you just want to use the tracker because the tracker is really fast. I'm going to show you how to do that in just one sec. We've talked about the symbol mapper. I think I glazed over the heat wave. Uh, Progresso we dialed into. Type on. Electrify we didn't cover yet. And Luster we just talked about. So let's go over here. I'm going to close this out and open uh, another project here. All right. So this right here is basically shot from a boat and it's being tracked and there's a little bit of reflection right and then there's also um, optical glow right surprise surprise uh, optical glow plus we also have reflection and then uh, we're using spot clone tracker to track that text onto that building there so I'll show you a basic recipe for that took a little bit of notes so I can uh, explain what I'm about to do so if we go in here all right, there is a few things that you want to do when you track, right? So you want to track the position, the scale, and the rotation, and that's really what sells the idea because uh, you're always if it if it doesn't scale right and the boat is moving back, now it's still the same size. That doesn't really sell the effect, right? Same with rotation and same with position. So all three of those things kind of pin things down and make things work a little bit smoother. All right, so we want to track, and uh, when you see P, S, and R, right, position, scale, and rotation. Now, there's particular language here that we need to pay attention to and that is in the effect versus what's native inside of your layers in the transform. All right, so, and we're going to use, in this case, we're going to use the pick whip. All right, and that's just so I can borrow all the values and the keyframes from one and then send them to another, right? So the idea is that I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to take this track. Let's go over to my start and I'll turn off this text and I'll go here, go to effects. I'm just going to type in spot. I'm going to type in spot correctly, spot clone tracker and just double click it, add it to my layer here. And now I'm going to, this is where you do the work, right? So basically track right what am i tracking and then where is it going all right so you'll see you can see if you look in here you'll see some values moving and let me just break down this effect so you can see what's happening like you can really see it when i do something like this and if i put it here let's just put it on this okay so i made another little um Another building that looks very similar to the last one. Uh, there's also different methods here. So let's just go kind of top down and, and talk about what this does. Uh, by default, like I mentioned, track spot. You don't want to do just position. You want to do position, scale, and rotation, right? P, S, and R. And then I go here, and we can adjust the size of that spot. Right? I'm just going to leave it at the default. Uh, the great thing about it is in just that little spot, it actually analyzes all the pixels around it, and it does a pretty good job of, of uh, kind of going through really fast and just uh, tracking everything. So here's, here's our actual tracker, right? If we want to track backwards or forwards, sometimes, you know, in your scene, you want to jump ahead to where it looks perfect, and then you want to work your way backwards. And then, and then you go back to your part, and then you work your way forward. So uh, there's no wrong way to track. You find the place that you want to put it, and then you track back or forward. So if I'm here, the other thing that's going on, right, is that is doing a repair. But if I were to do a one-to-one -one clone, now that's doing a one-to-one -one clone. Another thing that you can do in here is you can grab this and kind of drag it. 
and you can see that's doing like a feather but you see how it's interfering with that next building over so grab that and kind of maybe you can do a soft little feather but nothing nothing too crazy right because that's going to over oversell the idea here right that we actually tracked it so you can also choose here's different methods texture repair right and these are basically like blend modes right fill custom and then you can also choose a layer so even if that layer is not highlighted here you can choose a layer such as my text layer right so you can choose from another layer to clone uh you know to put that text and s and put it right in that scene so if we go back here and let's just go straight down i'll change this back to clone all right without being tracked that's where i want it to go and i can even make this a little bit smaller so spot size just enough to cover that building move this over a little bit and you can see they're both kind of working together as i move one the other one's moving um, when you're doing this i'll show you the other method i'm just going to show you how this actually works before i do it the opposite way that that is kind of the little hack for it um, so in here right if I wanted that, I would just kind of track forward here, from here. And, and it moves relatively fast. And the idea is that when I'm doing this, it's also going to... You can turn, let's say, for instance, if your computer is a little bit older, you can turn this on wireframes only, even while I'm in the middle of the track, and it's just still going. All right, so then when you, when you go backwards, oh, I tracked the wrong side. <laughs> All right, so here, let's do this. I'll reset this. But the idea is that you go in and you take, you take, uh, one piece and put it in the other piece and track it at the same time and now you kind of mirrored that and it kind of lives exactly where you want it to live without doing 50 clicks so let's go here just delete these out but let's just flash forward here and i'm going to show you because we have a couple of things going on in here for instance with the so this is tracked in the shot And the reflection is also tracked and anchored with other instances. So let's go here, and I'm going to show you something that I did. So, and this is where you kind of do the, the translation of what things mean, right? So in here, these are different, uh, different trackers that have been tracked closest to the water, right? And uh, the colors are teal and orange. And let's just go back, and I'll show you uh, so you know spot wireframe right this is where you're going to spot and then that's what you're going to clone right so the spot is the orange and the clone is the teal right teal and orange surprise surprise uh if we go here right i use these and i turned off i turned off the opacity of the spot because i'm not using it for those values i'm using it for just particularly for an anchor so all I want to do is use this, right, to kind of keep this reflection in place. So I'm trying to track the building right here, and then you can adjust your shape, right? So I adjust the shape so it's as close as it possibly could be to the water without being in the water because uh, the water, all those pixels just kind of dance. So that can kind of send your track in a whole different direction. So you want to be as close to the water as possible, and then you kind of... Uh, grab this and right here this becomes my anchor right and then this is for my reflection remember I showed you the reflection has this uh, this T handle see that so this is the left right and that's the right and now if we go over here let me just show you in here all right I've I've done some pick whipping so I can borrow values from one thing and put it to another so I have here I have uh, my pick whip is going from the axis start, right? And that would be my reflection left. Reflection left would be right here, 
right? And then my axis end would be reflection right, okay? And then basically, I took the values from these trackers, and then I put two instances of spot clone tracker, and then I borrowed those values, and I pick whipped it to uh, this effect on the text to that parameter. So if I open this up, these values are coming from here. So that's my access start. That's my access end, right? And that is the right side of that T handle, and that is the left side of that T handle. So the idea is I've anchored it down, and here's the, here's the best part of it, is when you're doing that, let's close this up. Also, when you start to use the pick whip or any expressions, you just have a ton of text on your screen, and that can kind of, that could get things all messy. So we're here. Now that I have that effect and I have the reflection, even though this is pinned down and tracked, I can adjust the way that this looks and kind of make it one of these giant reflections. Or I can adjust any part of this. I could even add another tracker to this, but I think this right here is kind of like, now I'm just kind of doing a pivot. Everything is locked into place, and now I'm just kind of pivoting. Is it going left? Is it going right? You know, what, what looks more natural? If you wanted to take it a step further, you could add like a lens flare effect, mock up the sun setting, and kind of add that in there, and then, you know, maybe put the sun over here, and then drag this over here as though that were the sun. So you can do a lot with that, and the idea is that this is, these are pinned down. So as I'm moving, those are tracked. Without those on, this T would just kind of stay in one place, and then, then it would, the reflection wouldn't really sell the effect. So pinning those down and just using, using the uh, spot clone tracker as a tracker versus being, um, you know, versus being a spot clone and a tracker. Uh, there's also another tracker called the Kingpin Tracker, and that's something you can use. It's a plain art tracker, and you can use it for signs, and you can kind of pin down something on a wall and swap out, you know, if you are if you're, uh, get a shot of a restaurant or the, there's a brand name that you need to key out, you can do it really quick with either Kingpin Tracker or Spot Clone Tracker. But, again, the idea is in here is now that it's tracked, you can kind of modify and adjust. Where was it right here? I can adjust that reflection there and kind of dial it back and make it subtle as well. And then that play is all the same. And you can even adjust, you know, if that's, if that's too harsh. Let's go here to my reflection, all right? And this is where you can adjust the softness, the opacity. So if I go here and I make this 60, all right? That's a little bit more subtle. Maybe that's a little more believable, right? But if we're not going for subtlety here, you know, crank it all the way up, or even let's go, let's go 80, split the difference, right? So you can adjust all of that after the fact, but just pin things down and use it and track it uh, with the spot clone tracker. And of course, as always, a little bit of optical glow sells that effect as a neon sign, right? And then once you already have it, I mean, this is just a text layer, you know, you can say. Thing. Ah, let me undo that. You can just go in here without the text tool, double click on your layer, change that up, and say, all right, or change it to whatever you want it to be. All right, this could be. if you wanted it to be. But that looks a little bit lonely, it looks a little cold over there. So if we, if we were to use the, uh, the tracker in this fashion, again, you're using pick whips, and this is, let me just show you, you would borrow from one, grab this right here, and then drag it to your other parameters, and those parameters translate as, let's just show you, twirl this down, and in here, like I, like I put in here before, right? And I'll show you this. So P for position, shift S for scale, shift R for rotation, right? 
and the idea would be that you grab uh, you would grab them and borrow them from the tracked layer already so in here that would be they would translate to spot center equals position uh, rotation right rotation scale size and that's it and now I've used I've used it as a tracker a fast tracker versus using it as uh, the two things that it is which is the spot clone and tracker so let's just take another step back here I'll close this one up Actually, I'm going to open the other one. It's easier. There uh, it is. Wouldn't be a live demo unless I crashed at least once. So here it is. Hide this. And let's see if we can. It is After Effects. That'll be the one. Let's see if I can get After Effects to open. Ah, OK. So here's something great about After Effects. In the newer versions, you have, um, you have an effects manager that will actually tell you, hey, this might have caused uh, a problem. And I love to push things to where they do cause a problem. So at least I know that I can disable this effect, right, if I've already used it and I have six other comps going. So, but for right now, I'm going to keep it enabled. And some things can be problematic, but at least the computer will now tell you. That's a great uh, improvement on the Adobe side. So again, just to kind of uh, you know give give you uh, an idea of the things that we've been covering here, you know the optical glow. I think I'll take just a moment here and I'll show you. We'll just make a quick uh, a quick neon sign or uh, just show you how that optical glow can be pretty awesome here. So if I'll close these all out, but we covered so far optical glow, reflection shadow, spot clone tracker. That's all part of the VFX suite. Uh, plus, there's a few more, and each one of those other effects require their own session. That's how deep some of these effects can be. They're like full interfaces. Um, so, Universe, Symbol Mapper, Heat Wave, Progresso, Type On, Electrify, and Luster. So, let's just go here. I'm going to make a quick comp, and I'm just going to show you. Hey, why not? Make it 4K. So, let's just call this like... Uh, lights. Now I'm just going to make a quick shape. I'll do something with. Uh, let's make a rectangle. And we have this red one here. And let's take away the fill. Oh. Take away the fill here. There it is. Grab that, duplicate that. Let's make another one. And let's change this one to green. All right, red, green, and blue. Those are all the channels that make up your video signal. And duplicate this one. Here's blue. And then let's make the same thing I just did in Premiere. I'll show you how. So I go to align. And I'll just align it from the top. And then I'll distribute them across. Now it's vertically, horizontally. There we go. All right. So I'll go one, two, and three. And then I'm going to put an adjustment layer on top. So this one here is my blue. This one here is my green. And then this one here is my red. All right. Now I'm going to go here, and I'll just make a quick uh, adjustment layer. And I'll apply my optical glow to that. And by default, that kind of just looks like it went, right? So we're going to adjust that. And I'll take this here, adjust that size. And here's where things get great. And let me, let me actually give each one of these a little bit more space. So I'm going to shift this over. So then that way they're not kind of interfering with each other. But even when they do interfere with each other, this is something that most glow effects do not do. So if you use the glow effect inside of After Effects or inside of Premiere or any NLE, it's not going to give you this effect here. So 
let's go in here and I'm gonna adjust. You know, this this can kind of look like you know you you're doing uh, you're making lightsabers and Star Wars type things. So let's go to the glow and I'm gonna show you I can adjust the size and you're gonna watch how these grow right here. So just adjusting the size and it still kind of keeps here. Everything still looks nice and smooth. That gradient did not change. You don't see any stair stepping. Like this is what makes this effect that much more beautiful. So if I were to work with just the red, see that? So let's say, let's say you're doing this on something that has all those different colors. You can actually just grab the red and take the red out of it so the red doesn't glow. Because if you're showing off, you know, part of it and you really want you know the logo to shine and the logo has uh you know no red in it but then the car is red right you don't want the car to shine you want the logo to shine you can pull it out by each character here and you can kind of keyframe just that i mean character color channel so but the idea is that i can go in here and kind of adjust each one individually and i'm doing this on a single effect that's over top of this as an, as an adjustment layer so when i'm doing this as you can see, I'm just adjusting each color channel individually, and now it's not tampering with. I don't have to do any masking, and I can just kind of work with each one of these values, uh, and so I can kind of hone in on exactly what I want to glow versus, right, if I were to go in here, and now I got to put an effect on this and an effect on that. I could just toss the glow over top and then adjust each individual color channel. Another great thing is if you go here to where it says highlight roll off, you can see just how much, right? how natural this can be, or even radiate. And this has on-screen on controls as well. So if I go here, you see radiate center, click that button, and this can be animated too. This is like I was showing you, you can do in Premiere. So you can mock up a quick background in Premiere using these lights. You can do uh, all kinds of stuff with this as subtle of an effect it is it's pretty amazing and of course yeah i just threw this over top as an adjustment layer just so i can show you kind of how i can how i can tweak each one of these like let me pull the red out completely right and i'll pull out the blue and the radiate right here this is just kind of adjusting no matter what it's going to give me a little something here but now pump up that green so now the green is kind of like illuminating. The other ones are like kind of smudged. So the idea with this is default looks like that. You can change it. Also, depending on what your color space is, all right? Color space being log, linear, all right? Or just video, regular, standard, Rec. 709 video. That's included in this effect. And I think that takes us around. We're at the tail end of this, so... Uh, I'll open it up to questions here in just a sec, and I'll hand it back to Matthias. And then uh, here's one more thing. You can kind of tailor it, right? And there are different um, renderings, right? Different quality of rendering. So you can be in draft mode. If your computer, you start hearing the, the fans kick up in your computer, then that's when you can hit draft mode. Uh, by default, it's in production. Uh, you can go to best. I rarely have ever gone into extreme, but it's there just in case you want longer render times. Other than that, um, I would say that's, that brings us to the tail end of this. All right. Uh, awesome. Thank you, Anthony. We do have time for just a couple questions, if you have any questions from the audience. Once again, a great, thorough job, man. There great, thorough job. So, yeah, you can definitely check out Anthony. We have had several presentations over the years with, with him. So you can check out Cineversity if you haven't already. So you can go to maxon.net, go to learn. You can check out Cineversity and all of our different education. Also, your QR code. What do yeah, you got there? It just got bigger. Yeah. So, yeah, up? if you want to connect, I don't bite. Feel free to scan the QR code. Or if you're at home, scan your screen. Yeah, scan your QR code, connect with Anthony. And then also, if you're in Europe, we are going to be on tour with that. So the design animation tour is coming to Europe throughout November. So check the dates on that. To, and to get, go to that, you just go to dat.com. And that's G-O-T-O-D-A-T.com. So stay tuned. And we're going to be up next here with Matt Milstead. All right.
Thank you.